A startling report finds that more than 47,000 of the nation's bridges are considered structurally deficient. In New Jersey, 544 bridges have a key element in poor or worse condition. Right now, Governor Murphy is set to make an announcement about infrastructure funding to help with those much needed improvements. He is in East Orange, where the mayor is speaking right now in New Jersey. Let's go ahead and listen in. Throughout our Department of Public Works, let's give them a round of applause. We identify areas needed that are heavily damaged or which have been a long ignored in the city of East Orange. Our goal is to make sure that our residents, those who travel through our city and their vehicles are safe. Since I took office, we have made a significant investment in equipment and personal and improve our aging infrastructure of our streets. I would like to thank my director, Chris Koch. Is Chris Koch here? Give him a round of applause. <laughs> and his superintendents who work hard each and every day, give them a round of applause. <laughs> and all the men and women who work every day um, tirelessly, our DPW men and women, give them a round of applause. <laughs> we thank you so much for your hard work and making East Orange cleaner and safer. Now, it is my pleasure to not only introduce our governor, and we appreciate him coming here today along with Lieutenant Governor, our Governor Phil Murphy. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. I love this, by the way, in case you didn't know who the mayor is. Right there, Mayor Ted R. Green. <laughs> Let's hear it for the mayor. As I've said many times, I want to come back in life as, as Phil Green, so I know what color tie to wear every morning. I don't have that choice. Good morning. It is a pleasure to be here and to be back here as I've been many times and to start the day in the great city of East Orange. Thank you, Mayor Ted Green, for your introduction and for your always warm welcome. Thank you to the extraordinary members of council, uh, the DPW leadership and staff, and to everybody with us today. I'm incredibly pleased to be joined by Lieutenant Governor Sheila Olivers in the house. And by the way, uh, Sheila and Terry and I and many here last night attended an extraordinary memorial service for the late uh, Mayor Ken Gibson uh, in Newark Symphony Hall, and it was an incredibly moving evening. Uh, and no, no moment was more moving than Sheila's uh, eulogy for him. So God bless you for that, and God bless his memory. Uh, we're also joined by, I said to her this morning, I've had withdrawal symptoms. I haven't done a uh, press conference with her in a few weeks. I'm honored to be joined by our Commissioner of Transportation, Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. <laughs> also, again, by Assemblywoman Brittany Timberlake uh, to behind me. Brittany, great to be with you. And Assemblyman Tom Giblin to my left. Great to have you here as well. So it's our pleasure, I will be brief, to announce the awarding of a total of more than $161 million in municipal transportation aid grants to 537 municipalities all across our state. These grants deepen the partnership between our administration and our communities to build stronger and safer transportation networks. Here in East Orange, this partnership is now more than $960,000 stronger. An investment in this community and the men and women here at the Public Works Yard who work hard every day to tackle the challenges of keeping local infrastructure strong and functioning. Moreover, these grants represent more than $161 million that property taxpayers won't be paying for the maintenance and improvement of their local roads and streets. The projects we are partnering with our communities to fund, from road and bridge repair to pedestrian safety and bikeway improvements, are at the core of the Department of Transportation's commitment to communities' work. I am especially proud that we are starting a trend with our second straight year of significantly increasing grant awards. These projects are made possible through the Transportation Trust Fund. They put into very real and localized terms the ability of the gas tax that we all pay 
to invest in improving the quality of life for our communities and the quality of our transportation network. And again, I've said this many times before, we are the densest state in the nation. Moving people and things safely around our state is not of passing interest, it is existential as it relates to our society and our economic viability. Not only have we been able to dramatically increase funding, but we've also been able to increase the number of receiving municipalities from 505 to 537, which is 95 percent of all New Jersey cities and towns, urban, suburban, and rural, large and small, north, central, and south, all of the above will benefit. And again, in, the, in a state as dense as New Jersey, in a state reliant upon safe and modern infrastructure, these are vital investments. And that we are able to make them together in partnership with our communities and residents make them all the more important. It is now my pleasure to turn things over to the Lieutenant Governor of this great state, the Commissioner of the Department of Community Affairs, and East Orange's own, Sheila Oliver. Good morning, everyone. Um, of course, uh, I wouldn't miss being here for one minute. This is my part of the city, uh, the first ward of East Orange. And I pass by this facility almost daily. I see the hard work, concern, and commitment that the city of East Orange's Department of Public Works has. I guess you could say I am your official neighborhood watch. Uh, I know when every leaf is picked up. I know when every piece of snow is, is shoveled. And, uh, Mayor, we love those new uh, snow remover, removal vehicles. And you know that Mayor Green and the City Council has placed back under the Department of Public Works a lot of the um, road infrastructure things that we do. Uh, we contracted with people through the years, but I do see the difference that you men and women who work here uh, have in terms of keeping our roadways. You know, I am, yeah, you can give them a, you can give them. And, and Chris C uh, Koch, I love bulk pickup. <laughs> so keep that going as well at the department. Um, you know, one of the things that we are all lamenting is that we have a president that is paying attention to nothing in terms of our daily lives and the things that we need in our communities. If it were not for Governor Murphy's budget making an appropriation of $161 million this year in the budget he's presented to the legislature, we would have no ability to do the kinds of things that need to be done on our streets and our roadways. Uh, myself and the Governor Murphy and the Commissioner, we drive from one end of this state to another on a daily basis. We are in every nook and cranny of New Jersey. We recognize how important roadway improvements are to communities. For the council people, we know whenever there's a pothole, you get a phone call. And we know that Chris Koch and, and the members of the DPW uh, do their best for stopgap measures. This funding is going to allow us to improve the roadways for the residents of East Orange and uh, create a more aesthetically pleasing community. So, Governor, I want to thank you for coming here to East Orange today. You know, we have a, slo a slogan in T-shirts. And uh, I'll close out with, I am so East Orange. I love that. I love that. I, love that. I got to get one of those. <laughs> love that. Thank you very much, Madam Lieutenant Governor. Uh, it is now my honor to bring up somebody who oversees uh, our transportation infrastructure up and down this state, an extraordinary leader in her own right, our Commissioner of the Department of Transportation, Diane gutierrez Scacchetti. Thank you so much. It, it's such an honor for me to be here today with the governor and the lieutenant governor, our assemblywoman and assemblyman, and, and the mayor. Um, it's so important for me as a commissioner to be in the community. I mean, you know, we see everything from a high level in Ewing, um, but it's only when we're boots on the ground that we can honestly get a good handle on what we need to do. 
And so supporting the infrastructure within our communities and within our counties and municipalities is really at the heart of DOT's mission. So with more than $13 million being awarded to Essex County in municipal and urban aid, and 1.1 million just here in East Orange, we are committed to strengthening the statewide transportation network. And, and let me be clear, without improving our local streets and our county roads, our, our transportation system doesn't work well. And so for us, it is not about just the interstates and the state highways, but how they interconnect with all of your local roads to make certain that people can get where they need to get safely and efficiently. That is, is the key to what we do every day. So to that end, we have awarded in the last two years almost a billion dollars in aid. County aid is about the same as, local, as municipal aid at 160 million. Municipal aid is clearly at the, at the heart of what you do every day. When we add in what we get in federal grants for our, our local aid, we cross the billion dollar threshold. And to me, that is, that is just a phenomenal number going into, into our counties and our municipalities every day. I am often asked, as the governor mentioned, where is my gas tax money? You, you raised my gas tax 23 cents. What happened to it? This is what happened to it. It is being given to the counties and municipalities to do the important work, and Essex and East Orange are, are at the heart of that. We need to make sure that our local road network works. There are many people that live in communities that never see the interstates, right? They're community-based, they shop in their communities, they visit in their communities, that's where their families are. So we can't ignore our local road system. And our transportation system in its entirety, the interstates, state highways, county roads, local streets, and New Jersey Transit all must function together. The governor has told us repeatedly, and the message is clear, that transportation is at the heart of our economic success. This is where it starts. We are excited to be here with you. Some of you have heard that we will be doing a lot more to support our local aid program with a resource center that we'll be able to announce more about next month. We want to make sure all of you are applying for grants, that you know all the grants available to you, every single one of them, and you compete, and we support you. DOT, at least now, understands it is a customer-facing organization, and you are our customers. And we need to support you and what you do every day. So you know where to find me and my team. We're so proud to be part of this today. We look forward to continuing to support you and make sure that your roads, just like all the others, are the safest they can be and that they serve your residents at the highest level. Governor, thank you very much. Thank you, Diane. So well done. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Diane. You know, I mentioned we're the densest state in the nation, um, so it's existential for us, but we're not the only state in the nation where infrastructure is is a huge centerpiece deal. Michigan is approximately the same amount of folks as we have in New Jersey. It's a bigger footprint, but like New Jersey, for different reasons, it's a big car state. Uh, my colleague Gretchen Whitmer got elected governor last year, and her slogan was, fix the damn roads. <laughs> Literally, she ran, that's all she ran on, and she won. Uh, so that's what we're gonna, we're, we're so East Orange, and we're gonna fix the damn roads. Those are our two uh, guide points. Chris, I hope you're paying attention to this. Uh, it's, it's my honor to introduce another daughter of East Orange and an extraordinary leader in her own right. It takes a village. You've got to work with the legislature, and we do so happily uh, to get a lot of the progress in this state that we need. And this is another great example of that. Please welcome Assemblywoman Brittany Timberlake. Good morning. Good morning, East Orange. Good morning, New Jersey. This is uh, an excellent uh, project and uh, funding for all of New Jerseyans. I just want to say thank you so much to our governor, uh, Phil Murphy, as well as to our lieutenant governor, um, our queen, uh, Sheila Oliver, uh, as well as my uh, running mate and, and partner and friend and mentor, Assemblyman Thomas P. Giblin, and of course, the great mayor of this city, uh, the Honorable Mayor Ted R. Green. And I see council members here as well, uh, Councilman Mustafa Brent, as well as Councilman uh, Christopher Awe. Uh, you know, this is something that is so incredibly important even on a grassroots level, okay? When you think about the damage that can be done to one's car over a pothole and what that will do to the damage on a everyday household budget, 
Um, I am so glad that here in New Jersey, we know that we have to lead on the local level and make sure that there are appropriations made to just make everyday life easier for citizens across the state. And I'm so glad that we have Governor Phil Murphy, as well as Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver at the helm, willing to stand in the gap of what is happening or not happening on our national level and willing to be there for the people. And that's what this is about. And to the commissioner, thank you for your leadership. Uh, we are better with you and for having you and uh, the foresight to make this opportunity available for all New Jersey municipalities um, with the exception of just a few, right? Um, so it's a, an awesome thing, and thank you so much for having it here in East Orange where it matters because uh, we need to make sure that our roads and infrastructure throughout all towns are connected and are working well. Thank you. Thank you. So well done. That's right. Really well said. Thank you so much for that and for your leadership and for being one of our hosts here this morning. Um, another leader in our state legislature is a guy who has seen it all, uh, has wisdom beyond anyone I know of in this state. He uh, stands up on behalf of the causes that uh, are so important to our state, in particular on behalf of the brothers and sisters of organized labor. Please help me welcome a legend, Assemblyman Tom Giblin. Good morning, uh, East Orange. We are in the House of Green. I guess that's a good way of putting it. <clears throat> But uh, I think all of us knew when Ted Green was elected mayor of East Orange uh, that he was a very detailed, oriented, orientated mayor, that he would be looking at each and every aspect of the community, uh, and we're privileged to have him working at it seven days a week, 52 weeks a year, and East Orange is definitely a city on the move, and uh, we want to really give uh, Mayor Green the encouragement and support that he needs to continue on uh, in a positive way for East Orange. So, Mayor Green, we wish you the very best. <laughs> to the uh, employees of the Department of Public Works here in East Orange, uh, many of these veteran employees I, I've known and I appreciate their strong work ethic and their commitment to making uh, East Orange uh, a better place. And I know that each and every day they give it 110 percent effort as far as, you know, doing their job and, you know, doing what needs to be addressed to make it a, a, an outstanding community. You know, turning back the clock a little bit, uh, when the issue of the transportation trust fund uh, tax uh, increase was first proposed, uh, it was a significant increase at the time. Uh, people said, to, you know, that could be political suicide. I don't know if you want to touch that. Uh, but quite frankly, I, I was very confident that uh, what they had in mind as far as the allocation of the resources when the public got to understand uh, what it was all about and the necessity for it and how roads were going to be uh, improved and made uh, in a uh, more efficient and, and safer manner that I think uh, they would buy into it. And so you see all that uh, effort was not in vain. A lot of the naysayers have been dispelled because you see uh, many communities, many counties, and of course the whole state of New Jersey uh, that are beneficiaries of this strong transportation trust fund. So I want to take this opportunity to uh, Salute the uh, governor of our state, uh, Phil Murphy. Uh, at least we have one governor that knows where East Orange is uh, in recent years, and I, I, I want to applaud him for that. And having uh, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Alva on the side, uh, we all know of Sheila's uh, love and affinity for her home community, and I know that she will certainly be whispering in his ear on the occasions that present itself to do more for uh, East Orange, so uh, we cannot uh, help but thank uh, her uh, great appreciation and love of our home community, Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver. <laughs> so we're here in a very festive um, mood. Uh, East Orange, I was born, in, born 
in a couple summers ago. Uh, but uh, seriously, uh, in the mid-50s, it might have been 57 or 58, uh, under the leadership of then Mayor James W. Kelly, Jr., uh, East Orange received a designation as, uh, you know, the cleanest city uh, in the United States. And we want to return to that glory and seeing our roads uh, maintained and our, our trees pruned and every aspect of community life here in its optimum best is our goal. So all I can say is whatever uh, influence or role I can take in, you know, trying to help you with projects here in East Orange or try to, you know, gain uh, greater support for any positive endeavor that the community is on the rise. That's what it's all about. Uh, and so to all of the players that are here, especially the commissioner, she's the one to kind of make sure that the dollars start flowing. So uh, we got, this is kind of Christmas a little bit early for East Orange, but you can come again uh, at the end of the year too if you got another check. Thank you. Okay. So, Well said. Importantly, it's also not April Fool's Day. This is real. I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my sister, uh, Chief of Staff to the Lieutenant Governor Terry Tucker's in the house. So, been with you a lot lately, Terry. I think we'll take a couple of questions if we got them. Randa, how are you? Good morning. So I think the reality of the world we're living in is that gas consumption, I would bet one guy's opinion, and I think there's a lot of research to support this, will go down over time, just with the advent of both hybrid and uh, electric vehicles and the change of habits by the next generation. I'm giving some remarks at a university later today, and my guess is there's a lot less appetite for driving their own car than there was 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. So I think that's a reality that we're going to face, and it's not today's business, but my gut tells me, Diane and Sheila and I have talked about this, that down the road, uh, we, we may need to think of a different, different mousetrap to capture the, the movement around this state. And there are some other states that are looking at that in terms of um, mileage, uh, mileage fees as opposed to gas consumption fees. So that's to, for tomorrow's reality. As it relates to the federal piece, I, I've read the same thing you have. I've not had a chance to speak to either of the, either of the guys. I would just say this, that I, I was given credit for being an infrastructure governor, and I'll take that, and I think Sheila will, will and, and Diane will join me in, in uh, accepting that mantle. I can promise you the president talks a good game and has done almost nothing. Uh, so if, there's a good, if there are good ideas coming out of Congress that jump starts a massive federal a renaissance in, in investment in our national infrastructure, I'd be all in for that, you know, in, in, the, in the tradition of, the, of President Roosevelt and all the investment we saw that we're still living off of, a, or the national federal highway system in the name of President Eisenhower. That's the sort of stuff that we need right now, and for our case in particular, it's the gateway tunnel. Last point is, based on the gas tax that Assemblyman Gib Giblin referred to, which took political courage to support, but it was the right thing to do. Um, there is a formula inherent in that, and every August, the treasurer, regardless of who the governor or lieutenant governor is or who the treasurer is, is presented with a set of facts and makes a decision. It's too early to tell where that comes out, but that'll be a decision that the treasurer makes in August, as she made last year. Governor. An industry association, the Gasoline Sea Store and Automotive Association, says one solution to this, to keeping consumers in New Jersey, would be to allow consumers to pump their own gas. Could that be changed here in New Jersey? They say that a lot of the consumers, because our price is now right. just as high as New York's, yep. those commuters from New York who come through New Jersey are no longer stopping in New Jersey to get their gas because yep. it's just not worth it. Yeah, so 
I will not commit political suicide this morning in East Orange. Uh, I'm not going near who pumps the gas. I'm also not going near blue laws in Bergen County, but thanks for asking that. <laughs> Anybody else? Brett. The, uh, did you keep the promise to not have a fair hike in this budget if you don't get pot revenue? If I don't get what revenue? If you don't get marijuana is illegalized, you don't get revenue. Fair hike on NJ Transit? Yeah. Yes, I, the answer is yes. If we get the investment that we're asking for that, uh, in NJ Transit, by the way, Diane uh, serves double duty as the chair of the board of NJ Transit, but the investment that Sheila and I have requested in our budget, the answer is yes. For, for those of you uh, keeping tr track of the math, we have in the budget a modest $60 million of revenue associated with adult use uh, recreational marijuana, but we have expenses of $21 million also in the budget against that. 9 million of which would be one time, 12 million ongoing. So both would come out. Uh, we had a similar uh, placeholder last year, and that came out. So even if you don't get marijuana, it, it, not, 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 we, we, will, we will figure out that $39 million. So again, I want to thank the mayor and council, the Department of Public Works, the lieutenant governor, the commissioner, assemblywoman, assemblyman, to every one of you. Thank you so much for having us. Have a great Friday and a great weekend, everyone. Well, we have been listening to New Jersey Governor Phil Murphy and other officials there discuss infrastructure funding. This comes after a report finding that 544 bridges in the state have a key element in poor or worse condition. Murphy did not specifically address that report, but says transportation grants of $161 million will go to multiple counties to help fix the roads.